Father, take control. Amen. Let everything go well. Amen. And at the end, you have got to say thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. Jesus Christ, name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are members of uh, the Otuo Heritage Celebration uh, Committee. We are here to uh, be part of the documentation of the history of Christianity in Utu. Uh, with me here in this team, we have the chairman of the Utu Heritage Celebration Committee, uh, Mr. Ayo Irupe. Good afternoon, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Also with us is uh, the initiator of this project via the Otro Union. Committee. He is the president of Utro Union. He is also Mr. Charles Elwe Ojabo. I am the secretary, Reverend Andy Wadia, JP. I uh, also like uh, the president of the OCF. Uh, Reverend Pio Gaide to introduce uh, the members of uh, the Christian body here gathered. We thank God for uh, this wonderful gathering this evening. Uh, we are all delighted to be here. Um, present with us here are fathers of the faith in Poland. <coughs> We have here the Pioneer President of uh, the Christian Fellowship, um, Reverend Gideon Okidome. Yes, uh, um, We'll take it that way, uh, clockwise. We have Venerable um, Omogbai uh, Alebe. He has been of the Anglican Communion, retired but not tired. Here next to him we have um, Pastor Wisdom. He is the General Secretary of the Home Branch of Church of, uh, of uh, the Ufo Christian Fellowship. It's a lot. And then next to him we have uh, Pastor G. P. Omaga. He is the Chairman of our Home Branch of the Christian Fellowship. And next to him is uh, Pastor uh, John. Of Bike and he is um, a home based pastor and indigen of this land who has a church and is pastoring here in Otto. Praise the Lord. Uh, and next to him is our financial secretary, uh, Pastor Amos Ivokai. Uh, here we have uh, the only lady in our midst. He is the wife of uh, the uh, General Secretary of the Central Planning Committee of the Heritage, uh, uh, Heritage Celebration. And she is a prominent member of the Ultra Christian Fellowship. <laughs> Mrs. Bridget Uwadia. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, and then next to me here is. Um, uh, the General Secretary of Utah Christian Fellowship is Reverend Stephen Ikiboya. Praise the Lord. Uh, because uh, the last are not the least, by no means the least. He is here with us. He is uh, a father of the faith, you know, in this land. He has been on the Anglican Communion, retired but not tired. He is Reverend Venerable Professor. Professor. S O J, Joe. 
National President Uto Christian Fellowship. Um, talking about how Christianity came to Uto, you are the uh, president of Uto Christian Fellowship, Reverend Peter Rendy. How was Uto before Christianity? Your own view. Yes, sir. Okay. Continue. Christianity came into Otoa in 1909. Pre 1909, that is before 1909, the whole of Otoa community can be said to be from the available records. We can say, spiritually speaking, we're in the Dark Ages. Um, the others had the power of life and death. Whoever they want alive, they kept alive. Whoever they pronounce death for one reason or the other will be up. And um, the people worshipped several gods, several deities and idols. And the, 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 the traditional religion um, led them into so many taking certain actions which would of course not be taken in today Nigeria. At that time, if you had twins, for example, they were regarded as evil children. And they would be slain. They would be even the parents would contribute in destroying those children. If you delivered an ambino, you know it was regarded as a, um, being associated with the white man. And the white man was held with suspicion. So the Abino would not leave. And so because they had were so many deities that were worshipped in the land, uh, the lives of the people were controlled by the dictates of these deities. And it was not easy for the indigenous, although that was the best, as far as they knew. That was the best life they, 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 could, they could have until Christianity came. Before Christianity, Otto, uh, Otto, like most African societies, saw that had a, a, a world view in which the exist existence of God was generally acknowledged. That's why Otto had a name for God, Osalobwa. Mm -hmm. And that a it was inherent you know, that as a belief system, people knew that God existed and still exists. Uh, but in terms of worldview, one would say that there are two worldviews. The physical one that which we see activities of human beings, human experience, and then another Another second worldview uh, that focuses more at the realm of spirituality and superstition, uh, such that most things had explanations that rooted in this traditional belief system: successes, fortunes, and misfortunes were explained away. Within the context of that spirituality and superstition, in which case there were supernatural forces that needed to be appeased, such as ancestors. Then there were other spiritual forces that need to be feared, whose activities were also believed to affect fortunes of people, their misfortunes. For example, the idea of witchcraft and wizardry was strongly held among the people. And so in order to in order to succeed, 
in order to avoid misfortunes, it was commonly believed that there were certain supernatural forces that needed to be appeased. And then there were taboos, there were observances that needed to be kept to. And all these affected or had great influence in behavior. How people, how the entire committee was conducted. There were deities that were acknowledged and recognized as very, having very strong influence in the community. And so there was no way the entire community could be uh, discussed, organized without reference to that realm of thought that was deeply rooted in the traditional belief system. So this one was very strong. As we go on later, maybe we'll find out whether the extent to which people still hold to it, the extent to which this influence still exists. But before Christianity, this was a very prominent and dominant pattern of behavior. So that general rules, acceptable rules of conduct were, were rooted in this traditional belief system. That if you want to succeed, if you want to avoid trouble, keep to certain uh, observances, keep to certain prescribed pattern of acceptable behavior and conduct within the community that are rooted in the traditional belief system. So as Christianity came in, the first evidence of a new life would be to stay away from some things. This was what was going to result in conflict later because not to accept this traditional pattern of behavior and belief system was easily, was easily uh, seen as an affront against the community. I think I would like to stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Oju. Thank you. I think uh, and the introduction you have given is quite robust. Mm. And uh, we are so happy at that. When and how did Christianity come to Rotor? Huh? Professor Oju. Thank you. I think uh, and the introduction you have given is quite robust. And uh, we are so happy at that. When and how did Christianity come to Rotor? Like we have said, the Christianity came into Rotor in 1909. There was one, um, um, Daniel Akbetu, Akbetu, who was a native of Iki. Uh, he was... Um, uh, a pastor of the CMS Church, the Anglican Church, you know, at Iki. He and uh, one um, David Ari, who was his uh, Babaibe, you know, in uh, Iki at that time, came to Otuo on a missionary trip to hold a crusade which, um, which blows out and resulted in uh, the, com uh, the conversion of a certain crop of individuals uh, within Otto. This nucleus of persons, people like um, Simeon Otobai, uh, people like uh, uh, Gabriel Amadi, Simeon Otobai were from Oluma quarters in Otto. Gabriel Amadi was uh, from Igera quarters in Otto. People like Daniel Agboike of Amoya, and then people like uh, Oswaleja of Imafu, you know, to mention just a few. These people got converted and became the nucleus of the first converts in Otu. Thereafter, Christianity grew by the tenacity and the uh, doggedness of this early converts who came to Christianity, you know, from the, from the crusade that was held by um, uh, Daniel at, uh, 
Okbeku, uh, Okbetu, and uh, uh, David Dawi. You know, I think that's how Christianity came into it in 1909. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Christian Fellowship for this opportunity mm -hmm. to enlighten us about the background of Christianity in Otto. Uh, as president and member of the ESCO, uh, when we were planning this event, it was all about culture of Otto, uh, the foods, our language, those were the core areas we were looking at. And then it occurred to us that when we talk about the culture, which is the way of life of the people, it does not end with just traditional culture. Mm -hmm. There is also uh, the Christian culture. It's also part of the way of life of the people. And we know that it started with the traditional system. Some of us, young, growing up in the community, we saw how this started and how Christianity evolved over time. So that was why this part of the program meant a lot for us and for the young generation to understand where the struggle started from and where we are today. And to thank all those that have been part of the development of Christianity in Otto. And we appreciate you all. And now, if we now look at the questions that have been raised, is to enlighten us more. So here, based on the flow of what we've been discussing, we'd like to know who was Apostle Simeon Otowai, which you mentioned in your part of the history, and what brought him to the limelight that he became one of the pillars of Christianity in Europe? Yes, I mentioned um, the man who brought in, who held the first crusade that brought Christianity, introduced Christianity to Otowai. I think the actual name is uh, uh, Daniel Okbeku, Okbeku from Iki, just a neighboring community here. Pa Simeon Otwobai was not called Apostle then, although we know that apostles, are, the apostolic uh, appellation refers to people who blaze the trail, who open up uh, communities for Christianity. So if anybody calls uh, Simeon uh, Otwogbae an apostle or Apostle Simeon Otwogbae, he's not wrong because he actually was the leader of the Christian community in Otwo in his time. He was not only a Christian, uh, he was also a very good farmer. He had a farmer, history has it that uh, uh, he had a farm and uh, there was this python that always came to his farm to eat up his fowls, his chickens. And the man fell offended and killed the python. The Otwa community summoned him that he had killed Ira, <laughs> he had killed their father. Because here, at that time, the python was referred to as a father. So. He was summoned and he said he didn't kill a father, he killed a python. So that's to say he was a good farmer. He was an illiterate, he was not educated in the Western sense, but he was a dogged Christian. Whatever he heard preached in the church, he held on to and believed it, he acted it and lived it all his life. What actually brought him to light was to limelight was his doggedness in holding on to the Christian faith. Much as he was persecuted, he never relented. Much as he suffered, even in his domestic life, as a result of his Christian belief, you know, there were people in the community who did he, who even advised his wife to leave this man who wouldn't leave Christianity alone. That was part of the persecution, and, but he held on to his faith, and his holding on to the faith has established Christianity in Otwa today. 
He didn't walk alone. There were a number of people, as I mentioned earlier, who were with him, you know, and held on to the faith that we have now inherited as Christians. Uh, it's, of, it's of significant note that the Anglican Church has built a church in Oloma named after Utobai. I think it's a thing of significance that should be mentioned. Utobai Memorial Anglican Church, Oloma Quarters. I think it's something to, to remember. Um, if the early Christians gathered, it is certain that they gathered somewhere, probably in the building. Where was the first church built? The church building. Where was it built in Oto? And what were the consequences, you know, for building that first church? Under the leadership of um, Parsimian Otobai, was built in Olumairu. And when we say Olumairu, for those who know the migrate, my, my, migration system in Otuo, how we came to settle where we are now, we are not referring to where we are now. Oluma came from somewhere else before we came here. That was where we had, it was in Olumairu, we had the first church built. Now, the traditional system we're, we're not too happy that a rival belief system had come into town. Uh, much as they didn't like it and uh, took the people with a pinch of salt, when they now had a building for themselves, built in the name of a faith, a Christian faith, and named a church, it sent ripples around the whole of it. And uh, incidentally, uh, Obao Yomero of Amoya was on the throne at the time. When he heard that the church had been built, you could, you could see the anger, the seriousness with which the people of the land uh, came after the church. Um, we are told that the Christians decided to paint their church with Arwe, which was just like chalk, like, like uh, chalk, you know, painted it with Arwe. And uh, about Yamaro ordered the immediate demolition of that church because they saw it as a, a, a rival to the system of belief that existed before them. And according to Obao Yomero, the only the shrines were permitted to be painted with Awe, a bone away. For a church to be painted was a major uh, with Awe was a major rivalry with the belief system, the existing belief system. So they went after it, demolished it. But something significant happened on the day of the demolition. The man, uh, Pa Simeon Otobai, when the demolition squad of Oba Ohiomero arrived and were set to demolish the church, somebody among the Christians rose and was going to contend with them in battle, was going to fight. But Pasimia Rotobai told the man to relax. She allowed them to destroy the church because he believed that the demolition of that one church would not stop Christianity in Ottawa, but that demolishing one church would give back to churches in every quarter in Ottawa. That prophecy pronounced in 1917, 1917, has long come to pass. There is hardly a quarter, there is no quarter in Ottawa where you don't have churches. Two, three, four, five, 
churches. Standing with buildings painted now in different colors. No longer just our way, but in different colors that, uh, that have now taken the place of that one church that was demolished in 1970. That prophecy had not only come true, but church and belief in God has taken a very, very strong hold in the entire community. That there are even situations where those who still associate greatly because of the influence of the larger community on them, those who still belong to the traditional system, sometimes coming to the church to give thanks to God for what they perceive as some special blessing of God upon their life. In other words, the church has taken a very strong hold in the community. Not just that there are now churches in every quarter, but the worshiping God Acknowledging God as the source of every good and perfect gift has spread so widely that even those who are known to still hold to traditional belief system often come to churches for one thanksgiving or the other. And later, we will see that the influence of the church and the community has really become very, very, very strong. We discover that the celebration of Christmas is not limited to known Christians alone. People who are Traditionalists will buy Christmas clothes for their children. They will go every length to make sure that there is evidence of Christmas tradition in their homes. They'll buy clothes, buy shoes for their children, and they even cook. For example, now, one common reference to the day of Christmas in Otto is Air Fuyesi. <clears throat> in other words, the day uh, that everybody cooks rice. And you discover that both Christians and even non Christians make that day a day of feast, a day of celebration. Uh, although it's neither here nor there, because Christianity is not, uh, strictly speaking, in terms of just celebrating openly, it's a belief system. But to a very large extent, it's something to be acknowledged that the influence of Christianity has taken a very wide dimension that should not be disregarded. Thank you very much. Thank you. Reverend Gideon Okegweme is my name. I want to add this that the influence of Christianity in Oto is that almost, I repeat, almost. Every male child in Otuo bear Bible names. Ijobu, Ijonu, Ijona. Mm -hmm. Whether they go to the church or not, Ifilipi, mm -hmm. and so and so forth. Which ordinarily is not part of their religion, but it comes from the uh, Christian religion influence. I was, ah. Uh, Adamuro. Thank you. I think it's of also a great note that Christianity in Otu, as of today, uh, is practically practiced without without fear, without intimidation. Unlike those years past, that people hardly 
can come out to identify with the church. Today, people identify with the church without fear, without any form of intimidation. I think this is also uh, as a result of the pronouncement of our apostle, Simeon, that we are can also feel today in our time. Thank you. Everything is getting better and uh, we are happy. Uh, the early, the early Christians, the very early ones, we learned they passed through so many persecution, like you have said earlier. Can you briefly tell us the nature of persecution they passed through in their time? Early Christian believers in Otuo were persecuted very severely. They were maligned, they were lied against, they were called names. We'll give examples of such persecutions. Pasimion Otobai, for example, was compared to carry a grindy stone, a very heavy piece of rock, used then as a meal to grind corn. It's usually very heavy. He was compelled to carry that grand stone on his bare head before the DO, the, uh, the divisional officer, or district officer then at Ifon. On accusation of the community that uh, he, was, he had brought a foreign religion, uh, a faith that was not in keeping with the belief system of Utwa people. He was summoned before the, uh, the district officer, D.O. then. On another occasion, he was summoned before the D.O. at Aochi that he was uh, uh, committing a breach of the peace in Utwa. And which led to his being incarcerated. He was imprisoned. He was in prison. It was when the, the head of the Anglican Church at Emeura heard about it that he took up the matter and he was eventually released from prison. He didn't suffer alone. All of those who associated with him, Emidoma, Swaleja, Agboike, were openly flocked all in the bid to make them renounce and recant their faith. But they refused to renounce their faith. At that time, it was very difficult for a Christian to find a wife to marry. Because the Christians were regarded as rebels or rebels, you know, in the community. People who didn't... Uh, flow with the traditional system. They were seen as people that the gods were against. So for, a, for you to give your daughter to somebody who the gods of the land were against was a very serious matter. Some of them who had already married before they became Christians, the parents and the relations of the, of the, of the Christian wife now will tell him to rather side with Otuo against the husband. So there were several forms of persecution that the early Christians went through. Um, although the violent form of persecution has kind of ended with the advent of uh, constitutional democracy, which gives every Christian the liberty, the freedom of worship, there is persecution of Christians in Otwa land, even up to today. Even up to today. These persecutions take very various forms, as we will see, perhaps, when we discuss the challenges Christians are facing in Otwa land as of today. I appreciate the full consequences of this early persecution of Christians. We need to 
situate it in the context of a traditional society where whoever is seen not to belong to traditional belief system, who does not hold traditional belief system, is virtually ostracized. Mm -hmm. These are dimensions of persecution that the early Christians suffered. That's why when Reverend Ogai said earlier like that to marry to a family of no Christians was like abandoning your community and pitching your tent, your tent. People who are known to be enemies of the community. Even the farm. Mm. Really far. Because farming in this part of the world also has community life. That people in the same farm zone usually refer to as Ewell yes. They know themselves. And if it happens that you are a Christian, can be sure that that community you will not enjoy community life because people will not have any reason to come to your hut in order for anything. People will not have any reason to come and take fire to, to make fire and so on and so forth. So very far reaching. Very, very far reaching. It may not be everybody being asked to carry a stone like Papa mm -hmm. did, but there are other Dimensions of this persecution that are very serious. That Pai Midoma from Orake, as I have been mentioned, uh, they found him guilty of one thing or the other, and they were to flog him. He has gone through such a process, I know what it means. So he ran away to Idogun for refuge. So according to history, after he had stayed long and was uh, homesick, he came home and they quickly lay hand on him and flogged him. Even after time like about five years, before they now admitted him to the society. Then, as I have said, um, if there are punishment, if uh, a Christian and a non Christian offended, the, the punishment of that Christian will be doubled. <laughs> Why the other one is just maybe lightly and say, well, forget about it. When they would say, okay, they find the, uh, the fans of God, those they used to find them yams, mm -hmm. corn, and others, they can say a stick of corn. Mm -hmm. so that of, mm -hmm. that of the Christian will be two. Mm -hmm. Why the non Christian one? Where the other one, they say 10 yams, 10 tubers, they can say the Christian 20 or 30. So that's how they went, as much as they can. Every, they look at every opportunity to pass on them. But they continued, and here we are today to the glory of God. Thank you. I think uh, we are going deeper into the story. We learned then that there were clashes, major clashes between the Christians and the non-Christians. Can you talk about some of the very notable ones? Did clashes between the adherents <coughs> of the Christian faith and the traditional religious persons. Um, one notable clash that has gone down in history what happened in 1928, December 25th, 1928. It was Christmas Day, a day where the Christians celebrated the birth of the founder of Christianity, Jesus Christ. But to our community on that date, December 25th, 1928, decided that would be the date that he too would parade around the, all the quarters of Otto. 
So as the Christians were rejoicing and celebrating the birthday of Jesus Christ, and for new believers, people who have just become Christians, who had introduced Christian, Christianity to a community, a, uh, generally traditional community, they made that day a very special celebration. So they rolled out their drums and were dancing and processing. And the masquerades, the other masquerades, also were coming in the opposite direction. And there was a clash. There was a fight. Uh, I wouldn't know who beat the other, but it was a major fight. <laughs> it was a major fight that the district officer in Aochi had to hear about. And uh, both the traditionalists, uh, the age group performing that, the, the festival at the time, and the Christian adherents were all taken to Benin. And the matter was tabled before the district officer. And the district officer decreed that Christmas being a universal celebration, not only for Christians in Otwo, but Christians all over the world. And as the prophet said, even non-Christians now celebrate Christmas. So Christmas being a, a universal celebration, that day should be left exclusively for the Christians. And that on no account should Otwo community bring out their mask race again on Christmas Day. That decision has subsisted till today. Um, you will notice that Raitu Varuno, is usually after Christmas. It's after Christmas. Between 26th and 30th of December, every year. It used to be before Christmas. So they have now left the period before Christmas and Christmas, you know, for the Christians. That matter was resolved on the table of the district officer in 1928. There have been several other clashes, uh, which I'm sure uh, some members of our panel will be able to mention one after the other. I just want a little expansion to elaborate on what you have said. Um, the uh, words of the late uh, pa Philip Afeisumi and John Elugwe of Fijil said that the procession was as a result of the fewness of Christians in the poor. So they used it as an opportunity to come together and when they are celebrating dancing around, maybe to attract people because there were not very many. So that is what led to that procession as I said. And the clash comes, as I said, there were people masked. <laughs> there were people not masked. Some were younger than the other. So I think we'll stop there. <laughs> said, it was not uh, a, a very happy day. No. Oh, there were no cash out. They had to, as he said, uh, the, because that time now, the government was no longer in the hand of the Oba. The colonial uh, masters have come in. So they had to refer the matter to the appropriate quarters mm. and left for them. Uh, it wouldn't have been like that, but the, the district officer, as I said, pleaded with people, sympathized with them. That it was uh, uh, a situation which could be avoided, but it has happened. We should uh, be eight, but that that 25th, as I said, 
It's a universal day to celebrate Christmas. And it should be left for the Christian to celebrate it the way they have it. It's, on, it's no longer come on these days now because uh, the Christians are very many. Mm. So they will not be processing that now because of Christmas. They go to the church. That's just what I want to add. Mm. The Lord. Hallelujah. The other conflict I would like to briefly highlight. So let's not go too far to the past. This one is just probably about 20 or so years ago now. Uh, after the establishment of a Otrobai Memorial African Church, there was a priest that was posted to that church that was Sami. Then we have enjoyed a family. Now, usually there is this Christian program called Universal Week of Prayer. Immediately after the New Year, the first week of a New Year, prayer sessions are held round. And uh, especially in the Anglican Church, it's a very common program. Popular program is held every year. So that program was scheduled and certain places in different uh, quarters were designated to be used for prayer sessions. It's a thing that had been done a number of years before even the said Reverend Nigeria Family came in. But on the particular day the prayer session was going to hold at uh, Ulila. Ulila. The, the prayer session was built to hold at the village square. Mm. Ekba. Ekba. So you are like going to make musical instruments, drums, <coughs> and so on and so on. The elders were going to have a program there again, maybe that evening. Yeah. So the, the, the Christian coming for prayer session was easily interpreted as a confrontation. And the community confronted the church community there and insisted that there were family was packed from Otro Otro that day. The mother was taken to the other palace. Uh, this man was drawn by then. Uh, uh, yes. Hello. Yes. Now, it was so serious that some of us had to come from where I went to our uh, bishop, Asabongi Daura, took the intervention of the bishop, the late Most Reverend Albert Agbaje, who came to We all went to the palace where this matter was discussed. And I want to thank God for that man, who saw to it that this, the aim of the church was not to confront the community. Mm. Prayer is for everybody, the entire community. And then the, the, the bishop was able to explain to the palace and the chief, the, 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 the OVN and the palace chief, that there was no intention on the part of that church to confront the community. Because the initial interpretation was that Christians were there so that as the traditionalists are playing their own drum, the Christians could be a, like, a kind of competition. But the threat was so severe that they wanted everyone to pack out of that day. And if the, man, if the bishop had not intervened, yes. I'm sure that attack would have been extended to the church itself. Mm -hmm. Because that was the early years of that church. So, but thank God that the matter was amicably resolved at the Upper Palace. Now, we've talked about the 
OCF. So, I, I what would like to know how and what was the motive behind the founding of uh, Oto Fellowship, Oto Christian Fellowship. And at that time when it was formed, who were the key personalities that initiated the founding of this organization? The issues that led to uh, the birth of Oto Christian Fellowship date as far back as 1935. The Christians, the early Christians who held on to their faith, who established Christianity in Otwa, and held on to the tenets of the faith, did not compromise in any way. But from 1935, there arose a crop of Christians, supposed Christians, who began to deviate from the ways of Christ, I would say, or compromise their faith by adding to their Christian faith the worship of other gods. And they invented um, Terms like, it does not matter. You can go to the church and also be a traditionalist. You can, um, that it's all the service of the same God. It doesn't really matter. What is important is that you go to church. So, that infiltrated. Part of this falling away, as I will call it, arose as, as a result of the fear of persecution. Because some people could no longer bear the severe persecution that Christians were facing. So, the elite invented Christian Owe, Christian Ewebe, you can celebrate the traditional festivals and then go to church to give thanks. And then there was a falling away. It went to the extent that the church was deserted. People were now leaving the church to go back to the world, to go back to join the traditionalists. And it went on to the point that even those who remain in the church, you could no longer distinctly separate them from the traditional system that existed in Otto. So there was a very high level of compromise. If somebody can be a member of a cult and still be a Christian. Somebody can be a traditionalist and still be a Christian. Somebody who goes to church can have an idol in his farm. That kind of lukewarm Christianity that was neither here nor there, that was a mockery of what Christ came for, what the early Christians in Otwa left for us, was one of the motivating factors that led to the birth of Otwa Christian Fellowship in 1980. There's a long gap between 1935 and 1980. Within this long gap, Christianity was watered down. And unfortunately, there was, there was what you can call spiritual darkness all over Otwa. When we were growing up, there were certain places we could, even in the daytime, you would be afraid to tread. There were certain quarters in this hotel, I wouldn't want to mention any, where at 7 o'clock, we were the room mm again. -hmm. At as early as 7, whatever you see, you take. 
Because witchcraft have become very endemic within the land. And mm -hmm. certain deaths also occurred. Were prominent Otwa, principals, elite Otwa people who died around 1971 or earlier, whose deaths also were associated with uh, some of these, you know, kind of darkness that had enveloped Otwa. Thirdly, Otwa looked like was forgotten. There was development in, in the rest of Oman. But the, the, the development that started from Sambogidaura, for example, got up to Afuze. Once you depart from Afuze and face the road to Otwa, Otwa was in darkness. There was electricity, light, in all other parts of, uh, of Onwa, but none in Otwa. And no development, no sign of government presence in Otwa. And then people were afraid to even visit home. Or at least we are afraid to visit home. Some will come late in the night. We arrive around 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. Yeah. And by 4 a.m. they are taken off. They have taken off because they did not want anybody to know that they came home. Because of the fear of witchcraft. Because of the fear of the darkness that was in the land. And the Bible says that the Christians are supposed to add the light of the community, the light of the world. So, some Christians who were not happy with this development, who were not happy with what was happening in Otwa, the government neglect of Otwa, the fear of the elite coming home, many of the uh, Christians, uh, I mean Otwa community, Otwa elite, not necessarily Christians, who were well to do outside Otwa, were not bold enough to come and build a house in Otwa. Because building a house in Otwa will mean that you have exposed yourself to witches and uh, wizards who will go after you and will not allow you to enjoy your wealth. And some of us felt that this darkness can be subdued. This, the light of God can be established, re-established in Otwa, and when light comes, darkness will disappear. That was what led to the Otwa Christian the founding of the Otwa Christian Fellowship under the leadership of our pioneer president, Reverend Gideon Okegwemi. I was there, uh, Reverend, uh, Reverend Professor S.A. Ojefo was there, late uh, Venerable uh, Benson Odiai was there, uh, Mrs., now Mrs. Uh, Selina. Um, Ojaga, Ni Ombakudu, was there. Um, John Imoriafe. Uh, John Imoriafe, you know, from Amoya, was there. I was also there. Uh, um, Mr. Ayo Odifiri was there. In fact, he was the uh, first treasurer. And then Mrs. Selina. Uh, Omar could do then, now Jaga took over from him as treasurer of the fellowship. That's how the Christian fellowship, what Christian fellowship was founded. And it was a praying group. We met every year to pray. And then we met regularly to fast and pray. There was a week of prayers for the whole of Otwa. Wherever you were at that time and up till now, during the week of prayer, wherever you are on earth, that week is dedicated to pray for Otwa and pray for the sons and daughters of Otwa and pray that Otwa would attract the presence of God. That fellowship formed in 1980 uh, is waxing stronger and stronger and by the grace of God, uh, the current president as of today. Thank you. About, uh the state of Christianity at that time. Mm -hmm. And what even was in it was the elite that time who would have uh, take, take the lead. Because that time, if you are somebody in Utoa who comes from abroad or a teacher or whatever, they are referred to as Ibonike Kesegutu. 
to a little white man. And whatever they do is taken as final. That's right. That's right. So, some of them will say, a whole principle should go on it. If you are doing who are you? So, this issue, as they have said, if you cannot be in them, join them syndrome. Came up. Actually, some of them are derailed or uh, have, have the little uh, setback because they could not face the heat of the persecution. So, and if I, I wouldn't know, but I presume that there, there would have been a discussion that, okay, what is causing problem among us? And they said, it's okay. If we do it this way, I'll yoga. Uh, if this hand is washing this hand, this hand will be washing the other. So that was adopted. If I one of the churches I attended and uh, when there was all the, why oh! <laughs> inside the church. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> as much as that. <laughs> so, and uh, as I said, even those who founded the uh, OC of that time, the, the oldest was about 33 years old. And they were, uh, they have just started. Uh, is, uh, they don't know what they are doing yet. Very soon, yes, if they are here, they are kids. Oh, thank God. That is so. It's just to. We call it Utro was a vanguard of Christianity in Utro. That this thing cannot be wished away. And the fate of uh, well, Pauto by this was not how they left it. So let us also try. If they are elites, we are also elites. Let us try and, uh, by the grace of God, as I said, there was scripture, you know, that time, and other people were uh, training the young ones, and the young ones who wanted to practice their faith by example. And that is what led up. Without the whole of these years, today, so as a witness, what is happening in now? Prayers, midnight, going around the quarters, even the road junctions. Yes. We do it every year. January again, we still go to the road junction and pronounce blessing to come into the community. And that all evils try to enter should be blocked. And that's the position. Thank you very much, sir. Um, with taking a boss eye view or uh, looking back, leaning back, and uh, we can't remain in the past, we have to come to the present. The Christianity is still on, but in the past we're talking about persecution, clashes and so on. What are the current challenges? To Christians, to the Christian faith, that needed to be addressed because this documentation must be part of it. And what are the possible solutions? What are Christians facing now that we see as something coming up, maybe interfering with their faith? Uh, Christianity, you know, today has contemporary challenges. The persecution of Christians as we said earlier, it's no longer violent. Nobody is being flogged today because of the advent of a constitutional government or constitutional democracy, which gives citizens the liberty uh, or the freedom of religion. Um, people are no longer flogged. People are no longer asked to carry grandy stones on their bare head. But Christianity in Utwa today, and by implication, Christians, indigenous of Utwa, who are Christians today, are facing no less challenge, challenges than the early Christians faced. And one of those challenges is the practical exclusion of Christians from the decision making processes in Utwa. If in Otwa, the traditional, in Otwa, traditional system, if you do not perform the festivals, you could be a hundred years old, you are regarded as a, a child, a baby, 
who should never be taken seriously and whose few views are not sought and not recognized. You know, too. You live your own life, but you have nothing to do with the rulership of Utu. The rulership is not necessarily the chieftaincy or the, the, the chieftaincy's tool. In every quarter in Utu, there, there are decision-making processes. In the whole community of Utu, there are decision-making processes. And Christians are practically excluded from these decision-making processes. Because when we want to discuss, they discuss on age group basis. And the age group is determined not by a, people, a number of people who were born at the same time or within the same uh, range of, 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 or period of time. Age group is determined by those who have performed one festival or the other. People who have been initiated into one festival group or the other. When what were gathers, they tell, uh, and the matter is tabled. They tell Otunesa, one more man on Lucy. Otunesa, the Otunesa are only made up of not people who were born within who are this, within the, the, age, the same age bracket, but those who have performed a particular set of festivals and who have got into a particular age group. They will meet, confer, and report, and then Ikeo will take it from there. They will report, and then the Ike Egoki will take it from there. When we have an, uh, an OV on this tool, the OV will pronounce the final decision based on information gathered from these different sets of uh, 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 um, discussions. The Christians are not represented in this kind of discussion. Even at the quarter level, when people gather at Egbo, it, this is, this discussions and decisions are made on the basis of age group. And when Christians refuse to bow down to any other God, because the Christian religion is a religion, is a monotheistic religion that recognizes the existence of, all, of only one God. And when you have other gods, or other whatever, that others subscribe to, others worship because of the traditional system, the Christian is, it would be against the, the ethics of his faith or the tenets of his faith if he does that. So the Christians do not perform the festivals and are, are by implication, excluded from the decision making processes in Utu. Now, uh, 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 society is developing. And Many of our fathers who are in the traditional system, majority of their Christian of, of their children are not following the traditional system. They are Christian. So there is a very relevant segment of our community that is now Christian. To continue to exclude this relevant segment of Otwa, of Otwa, many of whom are in government and well known, and, be, and they are excluded from the decision making processes in Otwa is a very serious matter. And the Christians are agitating that they are not asking to be uh, taken seriously because they are Christians, but because they are bona fide indigenous of this land. We are old war. There is nowhere you can push us to. And if we are old war, then we should be taken seriously. When decisions are to be taken, it should not be determined only by the festival you have performed. There are bright ideas that can come from people who didn't perform the festivals because we are all working towards the good of this land. Thank you. First, there was an aspect of that question that uh, was not put forward just now. Okay. Because actually we talked about the challenges. Mm. What do you think are the possible solutions to these challenges? Then today, uh, we can see churches everywhere in the world. How many churches? Do we have an idea how many churches we have in the community? How many of them are indigenous churches that are headed by the indigenous? By the indigenous? Could you please take those questions together?
exclusion of Christians from the decision-making processes in Ottawa. It's a very simple thing. Everybody cannot subscribe to one religion. You have the right to you pay and practice your traditional religion. The Christian also has a right to practice his Christian faith. But we are all members of the same community. Christians should be allowed to take full active part, active part in the decision-making processes of Otto. They should not only be seen and not be heard. They should be taken seriously. Their rights should be given to them. And, and uh, whatever contribution anybody can make to the development of Otto, whether you are a Christian or a traditionalist, what is important, the, the principal object of development is go to work. And anybody can contribute to it. Now the question of how many churches we have in Utwa today. We, we recall that in 1917, <clears throat> one church was built in Utwa that was demolished by the uh, traditional system because it was seen as offending, you know, the, the system. Now, as we speak, there are over 90 churches in Ottawa. And there is no quarter in Ottawa that does not have a church or several churches where the name of the Lord and all these churches are filled with Ottawa people who are worshipping God the best they can. Among these churches, we have presidents and founders who are indigenous of Ottawa. Up to 25-50% of these many churches in Ottawa can be traced. Why some are denominational churches that have their headquarters elsewhere. But the branches that are in Ottawa were brought to Ottawa by indigenous who had seen what the, who were members of these denominations elsewhere. So we have in Ottawa today churches that were founded in Ottawa by indigenous of Ottawa and are pastored by Ottawa pastors. There are also several Ottawa uh, pastors who are indigenous who are pastoring other denominations, you know, that were not necessarily founded by, you know, uh, indigenous, but whose branches were brought to Ottawa by indigenous of Ottawa. So by and large, we can say that Christianity is thriving in Ottawa. In, uh, in 2009, Ottawa Christian Fellowship celebrated 100 years of Christianity in Ottawa. We call it centenary celebration. And we took account at that time, as of 2009, we had about 25, you know, churches in Ottawa. But as of today, 2023, we have over 90 churches and more. Just two weeks ago, another church was better than Ottawa. So churches are streaming into, you know, to, into Ottawa and Christianity is growing by all standards. Yes. Uh, anchor it on what was mentioned earlier by Mary Balebe, the motto of OCF, Christianity without compromise. compromise. That is an area where Christians are facing challenges. Not necessarily from the standpoint of persecution now, that how to make Christians practice Christianity without compromise is an issue. It's a major issue. Wanting to belong to two worlds at the same time. Uh, time will not permit to go to the table. A man called St. Augustine of Hippo wrote a book, The City of God. Mm. He 
it was a kind of wake up call to remind the standards. It is better you know where you belong. You can't seek to be a citizen of the city of the city of God and also want to be a citizen of the city, city of this earth. So we find a situation where people who have so to speak, so to speak, the converted to Christian faith have not been able to completely let go the, their own ways. And so this in itself is creating a problem because when you go out to win people into the fold, that those who say, well, uh, I thank God that I'm not a, a Christian. I think I'm okay like this. What I am seeing amongst you, you, if that is what it is to be a Christian, I think I'm okay with where I am. In other words, that aspect of being the light of the world is still a lot that needs to be done in that regard. So that the message what you preach, what you tell people that Christianity is all about, should be seen in you. Be seen in you. Uh, if Christianity allows you to belong to the church on Sunday and also allows you to belong to other people on other days, then it becomes very difficult to truly come back. So this is an aspect where I think the Christian community is also working on it's a challenge. Obviously, what are the challenges that we are facing? It's not only in respect of persecution, but trying to ensure that that Christianity without compromise mm -hmm. as an objective is achieved. Uh, we talked about Christianity in the war the challenges and all of that. At this stage we are, that we come this far, do we have books on Christianity in the world? Kind of, what documentation, what level of documentation do we have on Christianity in the world that the young ones and others can come across to enlighten their minds. And what kind of, the, what the titles of such books, the authors, and when they were published. Okay. The first known book that can be traced um, on the history of Otoa and a major aspect of which uh, deals with the history of Christianity in Ottawa was written by Reverend Cannon in Mallory Ebeke. It was written in 1947 and the title is The History of Ottawa. That book dealt extensively uh, in some aspects uh, with the, the history of Christianity in Ottawa and what Christianity went through before it was uh, established. Um, since Ultra Christian Fellowship came on board, we have written some booklets. Uh, the first we wrote in 1984 was the Christian approach to Ultra customs and traditions. It was not published, but it was uh, it derived from a conference or conferences, a number of conferences that have been held out to a Christian fellowship, you know, uh, which gave enlightenment to Christians of what they should do, how to take a stand, and what 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 we what people fear that we should not fear. I'm sure you know that uh, in Ottawa, Boso, oh yeah, yeah. Woman is not allowed to eat the pork pine. 
just because there's a belief that there is a resemblance between the Yeke Ye and uh, Okiaso. There's an, an animal called uh, Okiaso, a part of which is used for the making of it too. Now, they say Christ, uh, uh, Christian uh, women generally you know, should not eat Yeke Ye. But if you are not, if you are a Christian, and it's you know, and you are a Christian, you should have your own decision as to some custom, some of the things we forbid, some that we don't forbid. Some say, they don't go to the river on a market day. As a Christian, you should know the things that limit you and the things that should not limit you. So we had this book, this booklet that was not published officially, it didn't have an ISBN number, but it provided a guidance to Otwa Christians. And it was titled, The Christian Approach to Otwa Customs and uh, Traditions. In uh, 2009, like we said earlier, we had the centenary celebration. We're celebrating 100 years of Christianity in Otwa. And on that occasion, we marked it with a book. It was uh, edited uh, by a number of persons, one of whom is uh, um, Reverend Wadia here, uh, because he played a major role in that centenary um, celebration. That's the book we're talking about. So it was published in 2009. Uh, there were, it was a, because it's an edited book, there were contributions from different individuals. Um, uh, Reverend uh, uh, Venerable yes. Bayalegbe had a contribution. I had a uh, 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 president then, Panya President Reverend Kegwame had a chapter in that book. Um, uh, Reverend, uh, Reverend Professor S.O.J. Fo had a chapter in that book. So it oh, gives my. us, it gives us, you know, an idea of what we are Christian. In fact, the theme of that centenary uh, celebration was the faith of our fathers. The faith of our fathers. So we traced history and then came to the present and then admonished Christians on what they can do, you know, to further establish their faith in their God. We also wrote a very little pocket book, you would call it. Uh, it is called to a Christian Fellowship Genesis and Development. Genesis and Development. It tells the history of Otwa Christian Fellowship. Like the question you had earlier, earlier, what was the motivating factor? What led to the forming of Otwa Christian Fellowship? And um, uh, some of the things that Otwa Christian Fellowship has achieved, you know, uh, were all documented in this little pocket book, Genesis, uh, Otwa Christian Fellowship, Genesis and uh, Development. In 2016, we wrote another book. And the title was, uh, the Christian, the Christian <coughs> perspectives on our traditions and customs. Uh, it was a kind of uh, um, booklet um, on Christian living for Otwa people. Uh, it was also a contribution. It was also an edited work. Uh, edited. Uh, the chief editor was uh, uh, the late uh, Frank Macier. Um, an elder, you know, in the church. So um, we have several chapters of that book that deal with different aspects of Christian living as an Otwa person. We are dealing, we are dealing with Otwa because we are not necessarily only be a Christian. He would, he would relate with the customs and traditions of Igbia. If an outside person becomes a Christian, he will relate with the customs and traditions of the Hausa Fulani people. So we are dealing with this because we want the Otwa Christian to, to find his bearing and find his direction within the Otwa community and see, be able to maintain his faith without compromise. Uh, I think those are the major books we have written. We have written another one page, you know, as a kind of uh, introducing Otwa Christian Fellowship to uh, people outside Otwa, uh, indigenous, you know, spread all over the diaspora. Uh, it is 
uh, for Christian fellowship, what we believe, what we believe. And that little uh, tract, I will call it, arose from a recognition of the fact that people who claim to be Christians were beginning to behave in ways that are uh, that were not in keeping with the Christian faith, with the tenets of Christianity. So we have to spell out as a fellowship what we believe. And if you want to be part of us, you must have this as guiding, you know, principles which we we believe in. So all of these are in the market uh, and can easily be be reproduced, you know, for for documentation. But there is a book uh, titled From the Guns to God, which had to do with my own personal experience. I, I became a Christian when I was serving in Nigeria Army. And it was published 2006, From the Guns to God. And uh, for because of this, I will remind me now, I will bring some copies on that day, which I will give out free. Thank you. Yeah. To thank everyone uh, for this opportunity to enlighten us on how Christianity came to grow, uh, how it uh, grew, the sacrifices that were made in the past, and uh, today we have a story, a successful story. The faith has grown, and. Uh, we have, though we still have some challenges, but we can successfully say that we have achieved a lot sure. over the years. And so, going forward, we are hoping and praying that Christianity will continue to thrive in our community. And the relationship between Christians, the traditional beliefs, and other uh, beliefs will be in harmony. It will be a, a relationship that uh, there will be no acrimony. The understanding will exist and all of the faiths will be to the advancement of Oto community. Oto Union has started this. It's going to be a continuous exercise. We're going to build on this. Uh, I know that people are coming to this, they will have the reason to ask more questions. And so we might come back to you if the need arises. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, like, uh, going from that, still on the process of winding down, uh, the official committee for this program of Oto Heritage Celebration is. Uh, the committee set up by the Oto Union. The chairman is here in person and uh, he has to give his closing remarks. Mr. Chairman, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we've been looking forward to a day like this and uh, I thank God it's been quite fantastic. Uh, the organization, the discussion, the answers to questions have been quite profound. I really want to thank the president, OCF, who has been quite on ground for this. So it's Professor Ojo. I appreciate your erudition, your contribution to knowledge in Christianity. We do appreciate it. Like my president said, at some point in time, we'll still come around to get more questions, the answers to questions. You see, what we are really trying to have is a situation where our, we and our younger ones will be up to speed with how Christianity came into, came, came into this community, how it has been nurtured, how it has grown, how it has surmounted various challenges. Though there are still some challenges, which I know they can, they can be resolved. So I want to thank everybody, all the men I've got here present, the OCF chairman, Papa, okay, well, we thank you so very much, sir. Mm -hmm. you've, been, you've been at the forefront, too. Yes. And we thank God for keeping you this far. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there are so many things we wouldn't have known. Mm -hmm. 
since I've been fraternizing with you, sir, I think I've learned so much about Christianity and Christianity in the world. May God bless you, sir. Amen. I thank you all. Thank you, we appreciate you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, sir. It's a privilege to host you today. I feel very humbled, very, very humbled that you come to my house to do this recording. But I give you the thanks. I thank you so much. If you consider also, uh, if I should call the predicament, okay, let us go to him. I'm very, very happy. I'm also encouraged. Thank you so much. Yes, and we also need your prayers. Like you have said, we keep on talking, 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 talking. As at now, we are saying, give us our portion in the poor. Mm. And we keep on asking until God answers our prayers. Mm. Yeah, that we are not strangers. Let me quickly say this, uh, we were with the, in the party December 9, and they have told us again that the issue of stranger, that word is abolished. They do not come up again. There is a valizilious person who say, I'm mm. going to go to the party again. I'm going to go to the party again. He didn't send them to say that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm told, I'm happy that uh, our big brother is here now, the Kinayo uh, Moraga, they said that Atuiba, yeah. one uh, chief, Ade, Ujaga, has announced in their bush. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you know that? A move in a movie, one level. We don't care for some money, we will feel a power because we go out, Joe. So you can see this development. And I've said that a Christian widow should be allowed to live their own life normally, that they shouldn't be disturbed. But they cannot cook for or that a man from I go or from that family, immediate family. On a shark, we don't go here. We do what I can win my you parent of your dad. They say the, the, the property of the husband is for her and the children. So, which has never been. So, we want to thank you for your prayers, and we, have, we want to, every one of us to carry ourselves along. Nobody is fighting anywhere. But Christians say, give us our portion in this land. We know before we are not at home, we are going and coming, but marry late or not. We cannot continue to sit down look. And Christians will be any develop say or no. If I'm going to say, sorry for taking your time. Palliative. Marie Gubbs said, Palliative and Lajis are the food grammar letter covering by Igu Lajis. So, we told them, So these are things. They are very lovely. And those are fathers. And they are very, when they understand something, they just take a decision. Before, I I keep you a now. See Bonnie Badiwa. They are no big if I saw the game at BC Boy only. Nagay, why I get a good show. So, Wagabari, I told you, I need her bonnie and for Blizzard or Papa. So, want to thank them in in absentia. That love, that understanding. So, but I say, Poha, Bobby, the Monaqua, that's a man, number one, go, whatever, who bomb my knee, you know. So may God help us in Jesus. So once more, I thank all of you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Uh, everyone there? Yes, thank you. Unu yake abi. And those unu yake. Thank you, sir. Thank you.